Motorhead Garage, the program that each week introduces you to and shows you how to install the latest in exciting and innovative products for your vehicle. Motorhead Garage is presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now here's your host, Dave Dobson. Welcome to another edition of Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now, if you're going to lift a vehicle, there's a lot to take into consideration, especially if you're going to lift a UTV and especially if you're going to do it like this. It can be outrageous and very, very complicated, but our friends at Moorhead Off-Road Engineering have some of these problems solved. Jake, what are some considerations you need to take in mind when you're going to lift a vehicle, either like this or a little more mild like that? Well, you want to take into consideration your wheel position, your axle angle, and your steering geometry. You know, a lot of people try to do it at home and they end up putting a bigger tire on and you wind up with some clearance issues. All the time I'll get customers asking me, how big of a tire can I clear with and without your products? And then um, uh, maybe two weeks later they call me and say, hey, I tried to fit them and they didn't. I need your products now. So uh, on this uh, Can-Am Defender, we installed my products on the passenger side. We left the driver side factory. When we try to move it in, this side was actually rubbing. So it just shows you the geometry of the A-arm has moved forward and it still provides a good axle angle as well as steering geometry. So what have you installed there on the right hand side? On this bike we've installed the forward offset A-arms and the steering rack brace. And then moving on to the rear, you did work again only on the passenger side there. Correct, we, we installed my upper and lower adjustable A-arms on the rear. And what makes your product stand out from some of the others that are out there? Well, we use all USA materials. We use quarter wall, USA DOM. All of our products are made in-house in Mississippi. It has the word engineering in the title. It has your last name in the title. So you are an engineer by trade? I am. I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree and an emphasis in manufacturing. How important is that engineering knowledge to what you're doing? You know, you're not relying on trial and error the entire time. Of course, uh, engineering, they don't necessarily teach you some of the, the skills you need, but they teach you how to apply the skills. Your stresses, your forces, being able to apply that while you're designing the products really helps to create a strong, long-lasting product for these machines. So you have an engineering background and you love to drive side by side. How did you decide to merge those two things? It started out as a hobby. I made a few lifts for my personal bikes. People saw them, they wanted them. So I was working a full-time engineering position and I was coming home building a few lift kits here and there. And uh, it turned into I was working two full-time jobs. So February of uh, last year, I was able to go full-time self-employed and uh, I've just grown it from there. Another part of the engineering process is to make it easy to install. So what was the installation process like as you did here in our studio? If you can take the factory A-arms off, you can put my products on. From the A-arm installation to the rack brace, even our heavy duty tie rods. Everything is made for the weekend warrior to install in their carport, garage, on the street, wherever they need to install it so that they can get out on the trails and spend less time or they don't have to pay a professional to install them. So if you can turn a wrench, you can put these on. Exactly. Well, we talked about the quality of your products and just taking a look here, we sawed uh, a factory A-arm right down the middle and then one of yours and boy, what a difference. Yes, yeah, so the OEM arm is a 120 wall DOM. Our arms are a quarter wall USA DOM. It's amazing and I hear a lot of complaints about the OEM tube failing. Uh, do you have a lot of complaints about yours? No, we uh, actually see other failures like frame failures other than our products failing. So the frame's gonna fail before your piece does? Correct. Gotcha. I love the quality and I also love the adjustability here. Now we're looking at one of the rear A-arms. Tell me how this adjusts. Yeah, so on the rear, we have a double turnbuckle style. Uh, you have a left hand and a right hand thread. So you can adjust these arms on a trail, in your garage, wherever you need to adjust them without removing the A-arm from the bike. So you can really dial it in to get the tire where you want it. What kind of adjustments are we talking? Are you going to want to make once you install it? Uh, you're going to want to adjust these once you put them on the bike uh, the best you can. You, then you're going to want to ride the bike. You're going to want to take it easy, flex it, uh, and then come back and really start. You can put a level, uh, or, or if you have more complicated tooling, you can use that. But you want to have those rear tires at zero degrees. So this is going to allow you to get those tires where you need them. Uh, it's going to prevent the bike from pulling in different directions. You brought one more piece. This is a piece we installed that's familiar. Tell me about this one. Yeah, so that's our, our steering rack brace. The k defenders are not Known for having weak OEM rack and pinions. So we designed a product that would eliminate the flex within the OEM rack and pinion to increase life and reduce failure. 
Of course, if you're doing suspension, you're going to want new tie rods. You take care of that as well. Yeah, we do. We actually make our tie rods out of the same material we make our A-arms out of. We machine our clevises in-house in Mississippi with USA materials, so you're not going to break one of those. You're taking care of everything from front to back? Front to back, left to right. Excellent. Where can they find you online? Uh, they can find me at moreheadoffroadengineering.com. Thanks for being with us, and thank you for being with us. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings is brought to you by rockauto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Steel rubber products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. Hey, thanks for tuning in to Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now, this is the I wish I'd have thought of that portion of the program because I'm telling you, this is one of the simplest inventions you've ever seen. It's one of the coolest inventions I've ever seen, and you have the best product name we have ever seen on the show, the Oil Udder. Now, Kevin, tell me what the inspiration was behind this. We got really frustrated changing our own oil, and the mess didn't have to be that way, so we set out to solve the problem. 120 years of changing oil, and someone has finally made it clean and easy to do. Yeah, very simple. It has a very tough nitrile rubber, ready for your garage, ready to be beat up. It has a magnetic attachment that'll fit to the bottom of the oil filter, so it holds itself kind of like your third hand, and it directs the oil where you want it and not where you don't. Well, this is a Dodge Ram pickup truck, notoriously difficult to change the oil and especially hard to do it without a mess, but you can do it. We can do it. All right, we'll get to work here. I'm going to check in with our buddy Elliot over here. Elliot, I see you have two different oil udders there, so you got everybody covered, right? Yeah, Dave, so we have the three inch oil udder and then we have the four inch oil udder XL. You're going to want to make sure uh, you take a look at your vehicle's oil filter and look at the outside diameter. These products will work with oil filters that are smaller than that three or four inch rating. They are flexible and you can usually find the outer diameter on your parts site. And then uh, you have a couple accessories you brought with you too. Uh, this is, you call it the stand? We call it the mag stand. So, so it's a magnetic stand. Um, there's magnets on the back and there, there's also a magnetic oil bottle holder below it. So your oil letter can drip into it and not make a mess. This can stick right on your toolbox with a magnet or there's a nail hole there for it as well. And that's so cool. That makes it easy to save all the oil and you don't waste any. Yeah, absolutely. And we find that with this oil that you'd otherwise spill on your car, wipe up with a rag on the ground, you can actually recycle a little more oil. And a lot of our customers that work at dealerships or, or some customers that work for companies that have fleet vehicles have found that they're able to recycle a lot more oil to be able to better work towards environmental standards and regulations that help them save when it comes tax time. So business owners, if you want to get your ISO certification, you can either build an entire solar farm or you can get the oil udder and you can check off the same box on your taxes. It's worth the same amount. <laughs> now tell me, Elliot, if you've got a filter that's mounted at a strange angle, uh, how does the oil udder deal with that? So on strange angles, here I have the three inch udder. Um, you're going to put it on here and you're going to loosen the filter slowly. And just like if you were to tip a coffee cup slowly, coffee's going to run down the side. It's going to decant down the filter and go right into the oil letter. So just make sure to go slow and you'll catch the flow. Well, one vehicle that's notoriously tricky, this Dodge Ram pickup truck. Now we're going to step over here and see how Kevin is doing. All right, Kevin, I noticed you went for the oil filter first, and that's kind of opposite of what I've always been taught. Yeah, and it works really well with the oil letter because the inside is going to get oily. You want it to be a tacky and clean to start, and then it helps to take the oil filter off. It can be a little tricky with this vehicle and some others. Yes, uh, occasionally the blocks have oil coolers, trucks have oil coolers, other attachments, lines to the, with the engine, and there can be a column of oil that will drop as soon as that oil filter disconnects and having the udder position underneath will catch that oil. So it becomes a funnel there and everything drains nicely. And uh, it's also a removal tool then when it comes time to take the filter completely off. Yes, it is. And with the, the stickiness and the tactfulness of the rubber, it'll help you grip it and take it off really easily. Once it's done draining there, you close the cap and I, this is the part I love. You've got a really cool stand for the oil udder. Because you always feel like you need a third arm doing an oil change, we have it there ready for you. It keeps the drips from getting all in the frame on your floor, on your garage, and you keep yep. it clean. Now onto the oil drain plug, which is actually a really easy step here. Uh, you loosen it with your wrench, put the oil letter over there and the last couple of turns and out comes the oil and it couldn't be easier, couldn't be cleaner. Absolutely, the plug will drop into the oil udder, be caught by the magnet and then you can direct the oil where you want it to go so you don't miss your oil pan. And this is, if you're doing it on the ground, this is where you have your splash pad. Exactly. Keep things nice and clean. 
Well, it's as simple as that. It's so cool. There's no oil on the sway bar, no oil on the frame, and no oil on your hands. It's the oil udder. Makes oil changing really simple and really clean. Check them out at oilutter.com. We will return with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings in just a minute. Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. You are riding along with Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. You know, it seems like the U in UTV ought to stand for ubiquitous because these things are everywhere. And whether you're dealing with a Polaris like this or a Honda or any other major brand, I know just the place for accessories for your UTV, and that is Axiom Side-by-Side. -side. Rick, what can you guys do to outfit my side-by-side? -side? We can make your side-by-side -side look great and protect your side-by-side -side with quality parts and accessories. You've got some great looking parts here on this Talon here. Starting at the front, what are some of the things you brought for show and tell? On this model, uh, A-arm guards, trailing arm guards, lower doors. We put a bed extender on the back and we also make a tailgate for this unit and we make a full skid plate. Well, let's talk about those A-arm guards. First of all, that's the first thing you notice when the vehicle's coming at you and they look great. How do those help me on the trail? Well, they protect your A-arms from rocks and stuff that's going to bang them up and that. Plus, they protect the rubber boots on the CV joints. Now, I find that a lot of ATVs, they're quite capable when you buy them, but there's some things you could do to protect them even more, and that's where you guys come in. And so we talked front suspension, and then you get onto the rear suspension, and those look great with the uh, trailing arm guards there. Them work great, too. They help protect the underneath of the trailing arms and keep them from getting banged up and scratched up. Excellent. Then onto the doors. You have a neat piece that fits in there. I know rocks and even trees can get up under the stock doors because there's a big gap there. Correct. You guys have taken care of that problem. Right. Keeps the mud from coming in and that and keeps you a little bit uh, cleaner inside. Works great. And can keep you safer. Can keep you safer. Absolutely. You know, and I'm shocked that a lot of these vehicles don't come with windshields, but that's something you guys can provide as well. And I know that fitment is important to you guys. And I also know that ease of install is also important. You installed that windshield with no problem. Tell me about that process. Very easy. The windshield is a DOT safety glass windshield with adjustable ram air vents. Two people can install that in probably 15, 20 minutes. And then moving to the back of the vehicle, a lot of these UTVs have very small trunk areas, if you will, for your gear. And you guys have solved that problem as well. well yes, we make a uh, bed extender for that to keep your stuff inside there better and be able to put more stuff in there. And then we also make a tailgate that's a little bit smaller which does kind of the same thing. And that just doesn't give you more space. It also helps you manage all of it. And I love some of the features it has. Correct. It gives you more space and it has tie down spots so you can bungee your stuff down and gives you more room. Works great for uh, coolers and anything you want to pack to take out into the wild. And it looks great too. And you brought some other colors along to show us. How many different colors do you guys offer? About seven standard colors. We try to match the machine colors with our accessories. And then plus we'll do other colors also if somebody wants one. And how many different makes and models are we looking at? We cover the Polaris, Razors, the Rangers, the General, the Kawasaki KRX, the Hanan. Am X3, the Honda Talons, and the Yamaha YXC. Now, Tony, you design all these parts. How important is fit? It's very important. We want the installation to be easy for our customers. Uh, con comes with all your hardware that you need and installation instructions right there in the box. Sometimes you order online, you never know where stuff's coming from. Where are your parts manufactured? This is all made in our plant in Cincinnati, Ohio by our parent company, Tri-State Fabricators. Uh, they're a full blown fab shop. We do everything in house, wet paint, powder coat. It's all done under one roof. And everything looks great. The finish is wonderful. And I'm looking right here at this Polaris. The front bumper is a piece that jumps right out. Tell me about that. That's our new bumper for the 19 and newer XP 1000s and XP turbos. Just gives you the ability to mount a winch right out front instead of up in here where some guys just don't like them. And then uh, it's got a reversible mounting plate here. We've got a 3500 narrow spool on it right now, but if you're running a 4500 or a bigger winch, you turn it around and there's a mounting there for the wider fair lead. Cool, and you got a great looking rear bumper on there as well. And just like on the Honda, you've got a windshield, but you also fit a rear window on this vehicle as well. Yeah, that's our rear windshield made out of 316 polycarbonate, installs in minutes. Now, I don't own one of these, and I'm actually surprised to learn that a lot of the stock vehicles don't come with a roof, but you guys have a great solution for that as well. 
Yeah, this is our outlaw roof made out of eighth inch aluminum. Comes powder coated in seven standard colors and we can do additional colors as well. Just give us a call and we'll try to match whatever you got. Another piece you've added to these, the firewall guards that keeps a lot of sticks and things from coming up into the cockpit. You got everything protected underneath, A-arm protectors, trailing arm protectors, skid plate running from front to back. And the thing I really like, there's a little gear locker under the hood there to keep all your emergency stuff. And where can they find you on the web? Uh, you can find it all at www.axiomsidebyside.com. And you can find us when you come back from these messages. We are Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. We'll see you in a minute. Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings, is brought to you by Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by UACE 3D Max Spider Custom Fit Floor Mats, redefined protection. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. You know, when soldiers came back from World War II, they brought back their love for the Jeep. They loved being off-road and having a vehicle that was capable, again, both off-road and in town. And it wasn't until the mid-60s that the big car makers really capitalized on that when Ford came up with the Bronco. Well, in 1966, the first Bronco rolled out and the world was in love. There were three versions offered when the Bronco was introduced in 1966. The Roadster, which was a bare bones, no frills model, it didn't come with the top, often just had two seats in it, fiberglass door inserts in it, so it didn't have hard doors on it. It was like a Jeep CJ5, and that was used probably by a lot of agricultural type uses. Then there was the sports utility, which was a short, what we call now a half cab, like a Bronco pickup. You saw those used by hunters and fishermen and also by dealerships and service stations where you might use it as a runabout in a business. And then the wagon, which sold the most, and the wagon was then a full top and you could get a back seat in it and two bucket seats or a bench seat. That was the most popular, that was probably used most by families. The Roadster probably seemed like a pretty good idea. I think people though quickly realized that they wanted something with a little more weather protection. So that first year they sold 4,000 Roadsters, the second year they sold 698, and the third year they sold only 212. That showed Ford pretty quickly that this market, even though it might look like a lot of fun in the ads, real life is often a little different and you want a roof over your head and maybe some doors and windows that roll up. There were a lot of the Roadsters actually had doors and tops added to them just so they could be sold. Every spring, Ford Bronco owners get together for what they call the Bronco Super Celebration in Tennessee. And every one of those Bronco owners loves to show off their vehicle. This uh, 78 Ford Bronco, it's the second generation. And there was only 78 and 79 of, of this model. Bought it about five years ago and then spent about three years working on it. It was pretty much a basket case. I knew it had quite a bit of rust, but I didn't have any idea how bad it was until I got into it. Many different parts and pieces, new quarters, different doors, different fenders. The engine's been totally went through, new TCI transmission, new gears front and rear. Every bolt from one end to the other has been touched. The whole purpose of this is something for me and my son to work on. In fact, the decision-making process was he wanted something loud and side pipes and, and all that. And 78 was the last year of no Cadillac converters. 79, same body style, but I couldn't run the, the headers and the side pipes and all that. So that's how we come up with this. I kind of grew up with them being everywhere. I've been to a lot of shows. I've been to this event a couple years in a row. And I don't see a lot of them in, in this condition. I really didn't know what we were creating at the time. So we've been real happy with it. One thing I loved about the Super Celebration, it seemed like every Bronco had a really cool story behind it. So I bought it when I was 18, I'm 23 now. I bought it from my stepdad. He had a yard full of routing away ones, you know, the usual, I'm gonna fix that one day. <laughs> but he parted with this one, um, it was in really, really bad shape, sat for 10 years, was used as a plot shop before. I took it down to the frame, took the whole body off of it, redid the frame, put a three and a half inch lift on it and 33 inch boggers. Then the old body was in such bad shape I had to find a new one. So from the windshield back, it's actually an older 66, 67 maybe. The only thing I used from the original body was the grill. The rear quarters are new. I had ordered them online and they came. They weren't so very 
nice. They were supposed to be stamped metal, but it was full Bondo. So I sanded that all the way down to bare metal, and there's just minimal fiberglass. The flares on it are the same as what the front are, so it's a nice, smooth look. All new wiring, all new everything else, basically, is in there. Like, my stepdad is a mechanic, and so I learned a lot of my mechanical skills that way. And then my boyfriend does body work, so he helped me out a little bit with that and kind of told me, like, what I needed to do and how to do it. And he helped some, and I actually didn't paint it because I didn't know how to paint, and I didn't want to mess that up because it's a big part. So his brother actually painted it for me. So my original goal was just to get it out on the street, to be able to drive it. As I kept going further with it, I was like, no, no, I gotta make it perfect. I gotta make it perfect. It's not perfect, but it's way more than what I ever thought it was gonna be. So I still have some wiring to do with it, and I don't wanna put a roll cage in it yet, but I'm pretty close. <laughs> If you want to learn more about Classic Broncos, check out our show, Brand New Muscle Car, Classic Bronco. It's on our YouTube channel for Masters Entertainment Group. Lots of great shows on there. You can also find past episodes of Motorhead Garage. And if you have something you'd like to see featured on our show, be sure to email Jeff at masterstv.com. Until next week, we will see you here in Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings.